All right, so we talk about uh, wallet addresses. Now let's see how we actually uh, transfer Bitcoins to these wallet addresses. So the most basic one is to pay to public key hash, shortened as P2PKH. So recall that we chose a, a random number as D and we assume that this is our private key and edit the point G on the elliptic curve to itself D many times and obtain the point K, which is our public key, okay? So K is actually 512 bits because the X coordinate is 256 and Y coordinate is 256. We also add a byte in front of it, showing uh, as the uh, format of the point. So generally we have 520 bits of a public key as the point K, okay? Yes, it, it also says here, it is 256 with the X and Y coordinates. So we take the uh, first shot 256 and then write MD 160 of this public key and obtain a hash value. So actually we are transferring money to this hash value. Then when somebody wants to claim the money, they have to show their public key, okay? Because we are transferring it most of the time to the hash of it. So A is just 20 bytes. But of course, if you write it, you know, we, as we talked before, we can do some mistakes. And a lot of people made mistakes, by the way. And they're writing a small a, they wrote D and so on. And uh, in this case, we have the error checking mechanism, but in script hash, we don't. And actually a lot of people lost money this way. And we will talk about it later. But yeah, in order to avoid problems, we encode the A with the checksum uh, using the base 58 encoding. So I recall that base 58 encoding added a byte to this 20 uh, byte value, a prefix. This prefix actually shows what kind of address it is. So if it is your private key, you store it in a different way and so on and so forth. So this double SHA-256, we take the first four bytes, call it the checksum, add the checksum to the end of this value. So this result is your address we convert it in the base 58 alphabet. And recall that alphabet omitted some uh, characters that, that might be uh, you know, uh, mistaken by other letters, like we don't have zero because it looks like O. Okay, so we don't have a small L because it looks like one in some uh, formats. So this is how we do it. So assume that your uh, hash of your public key is just this. So I ran, as you can see, it is just zeros to F and zero to F and so on. So this is your 20 byte uh, hash of your public key. So we added the version byte zero. We calculate double SHA-256, take the first four bytes and write it as your checksum and put it here then convert all of it to base 58 and this is your address. So you can write your own conversion tools or you can use some online tools to calculate this kind of values, okay? So this is the address that you actually announce to people. When somebody wants to send money to you, you just say that this is your address, okay? So you don't have to be connected to the network to receive the money, this is the thing. So you can be offline. So let's look at the version prefix. So for public keys, we use zero. So when you convert this to base 58, it results in one. So this is why almost all traditional Bitcoin address starts with one, because as the version byte, we wrote zero. But when we uh, create pay to script hash addresses, we write our version byte as five. When you convert it into base 58, it starts with three. So all of the three addresses are script hash addresses. And for private keys, we write 80, but due to conversion, uh, depending on the following characters, your uh, private address can start with 5K or L. This is important because forensics people should look for this, okay? Because if you get the private key, then you know you get the funds on that address. So you should actually have a script that uh, searches the computer and finds these addresses and so on. Yes, the four bytes of the double chart 256 called checksum is used to detect errors. Error detection prevents sending Bitcoins to invalid addresses. If an error occurs on base 58 representation, which is the address actually you are giving to other people, 
when the error corresponds to the checksum, we always detect the error, right? Because we will calculate this uh, checksum again and we will realize that they do not match. But if you make the error in the first part of the address, so corresponding to public key hash, we detect error with probability one minus one over two to the 32. Okay, so this is like four million. So one over four million is a you know, low probability event. So you should detect the error. But if you're very, very unlucky, yes, you can still write a, a wrong address, but all of the nodes will realize, think that it is correct. So whenever you are actually trying to send money, your wallet address makes this uh, error checking. And if it is wrong, they prevent you to send the money. Okay, so this is why most of the time you cannot send the uh, money to a wrong address that starts with one due to this error checking. Okay, so let's recall how these transactions work. So Bitcoin wallet address are op hash 106, the result of public keys, right? So we are using op post to calculate them. When a data instruction appears in a script, that data is simply pushed onto the top of the stack. This is actually how the Bitcoin script language works. So opcodes perform some functions, often taking as input data that is on top of the stack. The most common pay to public key hash transaction is as follows. These are the seven steps starting with two data, which is your signature and public key. This is the unlocking part actually. So the signature actually, the, you sign the whole transaction, okay? You write the transaction, you uh, sign it with your private key and this is the signature you have so since you are tr trying to transfer money that is sent to you previously uh, the notes check if that money really belongs to you so your private key actually should work to verify those signatures that is the idea so here you are actually unlocking your money because somebody sent to you some bitcoins for instance a hundred blocks ago so now you are showing with this signature that that money really belongs to you and here you are saying that it now belongs to this person who has the private key of the public key hash of this, okay? So in other words, this output is payable to whoever can present a signature from the key corresponding to public key hash, okay? So you are unlocking your funds here, then locking it here and saying that now this new owner is the person who has the private key of this public key, okay? So whenever actually you signed it, now the nodes will have to check if you really own that money, right? So they have to perform these operations and check if you really had that money previously. So in your previous transaction, somebody paid it to you by writing your public key hash, right? Now they will verify it if it matches with the signature. So whenever you make this transaction, nodes perform all of these instructions, right? So the first step is the data, your signature. So they write it at the top of the stack, okay? The second thing was your public key. They also write it as the top of the stack. Now, the next is opcode, opduplicate. So opduplicate actually duplicates the top value on the stack, okay? Next is op hash 160. So this calculates first SHA-256, then ripe md 160 of the top value of the stack. So it obtain your public key hash. Since you are trying to uh, show the ownership of a previously money sent to you, they just take that hash value from that previous transaction and write it also on the top of the stack. Now question is if they are the same. If they are the same, you are saying that I have the private key of that address. So you're actually authenticating yourself here. So this is where the digital signature works, right? So you really have that public key hash address. Now, question is if your signature is correct or not. Maybe you don't have the private key, so you actually provided the wrong signature. So uh, next thing is op check sig. So this is just where the uh, verification works. So recall that in Elliptic curve digital signature algorithm, we talk about how to generate a signature and then we showed how to verify. So that verification actually provided in Bitcoin as a opcode. So here it actually verifies if this signature is really valid for this public key. If it is true, 
then the transaction is valid. So you now transfer it to the person as the public key hash where you write it in your own transaction, which you signed it here, okay? So it works like a recursive thing. You first show that you are really the owner of the previous public key hash, but you also provide the new public key hash saying that the new owner is now this person. 